Hello and welcome to Azure Lane Meta. If after this video you want to help support the channel, please check out my affiliate store at kit.co slash Azure Lane Meta. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be going over the May 27th update and the new USS event. Of course in this video we're going to go over all of the new ships in Mirror Involution and how good they are with their stats and skills. Before we get into that, let's do some housekeeping on these patch notes real quick. There are a ton of other mini events such as Little Enterprises mini event. It will work similarly to Little Amagi's mini event. We get a wishing well. We get some mini games including a free skin for Saratoga. We're doing a commander callback event. Of course, we are getting a ton of skins, which I'll show right here. Boise and Sumner get the L2Ds. And if Helena meta wasn't enough of a spoiler for you, getting you ready for HE ammo, we have two new meta ships confirmed. Yorktown meta, and this is Soryu meta. Anyway, with that, let's get into the ships real quick because it is late and I need to get going quickly. We'll start with the UR that everyone wants to know about, USS New Jersey. Stat-wise, let's compare her to FDG because she is a rainbow BB best in slot right now and we'll see how she stacks up. With 9,500 health and heavy armor, she becomes the second tankiest ship behind only FDG. And actually, now that I look at it, she has significantly higher evasion and 72 luck compared to FDG's zero luck. The luck and evasion actually might make her slightly tankier in makeup for that 300 HP. Actually, now after I take a closer look, she has an enormous anti-air ability. This is so much higher than FDG. This gives her so much more effective HP. With her 130% efficiency in the AA slot, I would go out on a limb here and say she will be the tankiest ship in the game. Another thing to note is she has an enormously high accuracy stat. This is similar to Georgia's, who's already very high, and she's a little bit above that. She'll be hitting people really well with that luck, too. Her weapons efficiencies are great, not as good as FDG, but still fantastic. Overall, this ship's stats live up to the UR classification. Now let's see if her her skills do. 100% chance on firing main guns, she fires a barrage, so she's a barrage battleship. Guaranteed barrage, already better than Georgia. This barrage looks super solid here. It is unaffected by the flagship position, meaning that she can go in and off flagship position. This is looking good for synergy with Bunker Hill. This barrage procs one extra time after 10 seconds after the battle starts. This is the same time when Warspark procs. This gives you a free extra barrage. This really helps at the beginning of spamming down damage. Some important things to note about this barrage that make it unique. It has a 100% chance to crit, which is awesome. It also has a 100% chance to burn. And with that firepower stat that New Jersey has, that burn is going to be tremendous. Finally, it also has a special armor break. This means that it can apply armor break, and this armor break, like Richelieu, is classified differently than all other armor breaks, meaning it can stack on other armor breaks. Overall, this barrage is insanely powerful. Skill 2, the self main gun dispersion, or the spread, is reduced by 5, making her even more accurate. Very nice. When this ship is alive and other fleets in the same sortie enters a battle, fire a support barrage 20 seconds after their battle starts. Wow, so this is just like Shinano. She has a support barrage. This barrage is not as restricted as Shinano's and it is kind of weak, but it's decent. Nice to have. If that fleet has an Eagle Union flagship, increase Eagle Union carriers and light carriers in that fleet's aviation by 15%. Oh, that's awesome. We got some synergy with the buffing of the faction. Oh, wait a second. If that fleet, that means the other fleet in the sortie. That means she doesn't synergize with Bunker Hill. Oh my gosh, that was so close to being good. I got to double check that. Yeah, so uh, after that, we confirmed that this will not buff Bunker Hill in the same fleet. <sighs> That's a little irritating, but this will be good for cross fleet buffs. So if you want to put Casablanca in your mob fleet and this New Jersey in your boss fleet, you can buff the Casablanca, I guess. But yeah, that was a little disappointing, a little smeamy here. I was kind of hoping that Bunker Hill did get buffed by New Jersey. Okay, onto the last skill here. Self firepower boost by 15%. That's always nice. She's got great firepower anyway. Reload also boosts by 10%. And her reload's actually pretty good. It's better than most other stats for BBs. I think I forgot to mention reload because all of her stats are insanely powerful. If there is another Eagle Union ship in the same fleet as this ship, so 
this could be as simple as a Juno or an Essex. Eagle Union ships in the fleet gain plus 15% anti-air. They take 5% less damage. That's all Eagle Union fleet ships, including herself. And Eagle Union battleships and battlecruisers gain 10% firepower. That applies to herself and is in addition to the 15%. So that's 25% firepower buff right there. If you just put one Eagle Union ship, this skill is actually really good. Big J is great. Overall, this ship completely power creeps Georgia. There's no reason to use Georgia anymore. In fact, she might even power creep FDG. She's got so much damage. She's one of the tankiest ships, if not the tankiest ship in the game now. She also is a fire queen with that barrage proccing at 10 seconds into the battle, as well as every time that she fires. It has 100% crit, 100% fire ignite, and she's got one of the highest fire powers that you can have, buffed 25% if you just give her one more Eagle Union. This ship is worthy of being a UR. She's not as good for PvP as I would have hoped, can use her in literally any sort of content, so good luck on your polls, people. Next up, we'll move on to the aircraft carrier SR USS Ticonderoga. She is an Essex class. Her stats pretty much reflect that. She looks nearly identical to the sister ship Essex. She has the same loadout, and all the equipment and efficiencies look basically the same, so she's basically Essex stat-wise, so we're going to look at the skills. All right, first skill, launch an extra barrage of planes on airstrike. They have a chance to special ignite enemies on hits. All right, so this barrage is targeted. In fact, these are rockets, first instance of rockets. So maybe that's more to come in the future. We finally have rockets. They all target. They have a special ignite, does a lot of damage. This is a single target barrage. This is pretty nice. It's guaranteed on airstrike, does a lot of damage, 60% chance to ignite. Second skill, 60% damage reduction for the first four times this ship takes damage each battle. This is interesting. It's a lot of damage reduction, but it's only the first four times, and that could be, you know, some stray shots, stray torpedo, but it's interesting. At the start of the battle and every 20 seconds afterward, create a shield on the vanguard that blocks six bullets, lasts for eight seconds, so she just creates a vanguard shield. Timing is decent. Third skill, she increases her own aviation stat by 10%. Also, if there are two or more carriers or light carriers in the fleet, this includes herself, the flagship takes 15% less damage. Okay, this ship is decent. She got an Essex class base here. We have some targeting rockets that give her single target damage, and she has a lot of damage reduction. She can reduce the damage of the flagship. She also reduces damage of herself. However, her being a tank is kind of weird given she has medium armor and like 6k health pool. So it's kind of a funky ship, but she is a solid Essex class carrier, but I still think that Essex is best for that class. However, I'm really interested to see in what this new rockets can do with this special ignite. Seems like a new mechanic for going forward. Okay, next up we have SR Heavy Cruiser USS San Francisco. She has medium armor, a decent health pool, and some firepower. In fact, all of her stats remind me very much so of Bremington. However, if we look across the board, stat-wise at least, including the efficiencies on equipment, she's going to be mostly worse than Bremington. So hopefully the stats will make up for that. Otherwise, she'll kind of be a bust because we already have Bremington. First skill, 10 seconds after the battle starts and every 10 seconds afterward, this is a really short time period, 75% chance to fire a barrage. So this barrage is going to be going off all the time. When it fails to trigger, she increases her own anti-air by 10% as well as her accuracy by 10% for the next five seconds. That accuracy buff actually could be pretty nice, especially if she's having to kill a bunch of destroyers. Overall though, this star barrage is not that powerful. Of course, it's going to be going off all the time, so the cumulative effect of it having to go off all the time means that it will actually add up to some DPS. Of course, she's a vanguard, so she's not dealing the majority of your damage, but I guess it's a decent barrage. Skill 2. She increases her evasion stat and her anti-air by 10%. That's nice for survivability. If the ship is the lead vanguard ship, an additional 5% to the evasion and anti-air stat, so 15% buff. She also takes 15% less damage. That's end of damage calculation reduction there. Very nice. Now this skill changes based on where she's placed in your vanguard. If you have three ships in your vanguard and this ship is in the middle position, instead of the extra stat boost, she gets a heal for 10% 20 seconds after the battle starts. This is very interesting. 10% is pretty strong and it heals all the vanguard ships. This could be really good in PvE if you need some healing. For example, Operation Siren. If you are planning on going with battles over 20 seconds, it's not too uncommon. If the 
this ship is in the rear instead of in the middle or in the front, this ship instead gets 15% firepower, 10% anti-air, and all Vanguard ships deal 5% more damage. This buffs the whole Vanguard. That's actually pretty nice. So we put her in the front for defensive, we put her in the middle for her heal, and we put her in the back for her offensive. Pick and choose. And this barrage here is just the AoE attack barrage. However, something I want to note is it has a slow. When it hits, it slows the enemies by 15%. This is great for if you need to line up with a battleship. For example, New Jersey. San Francisco overall looks pretty good in PvE. She's definitely not a PvP ship, but for PvE, she has a lot of utility. She's got good barrages to help with mobbing. She has a lot of versatility in that second skill. And of course, a slow is super important if you want to use her for endgame content where you're trying to do like EX modes or big bosses in Operation Siren. This ship is definitely, I would say, a must pick up if you're new and probably a must pick up just in general. This ship is very good. I mean, she's not as good as New Jersey, but she's also not a UR. She's better than Ticonderoga as far as I'm concerned. To finish off the SRs for the event, we have the submarine USS Archerfish. We really don't care much about her stats except for the torpedo stat, which she has identical torpedo stat to U-47. She also has higher submarine torpedo efficiency. 130% versus 125%. So far, so good. Let's get into the skills. She deals 15% more damage against heavy armor enemies. Rip Shinano. In case you're wondering, she sunk Shinano. If sorted with other Eagle Union submarines, so this is going to be Cavella or Elbacore, all Eagle Union submarines in the fleet gain 15% crit damage and 8% torpedo stat and 8% accuracy. These are the stats that we love to increase, accuracy and torpedo stat, and crit damage is great because, you know, we're going for the extra DPS. This is a great sub-faction booster here. Maybe the Americans will overtake the Germans as the go-to sub-faction. Skill 2, she gains 20 extra oxygen. At 243, she already had a good oxygen, so she will be able to be hidden for a very long time. Now, this second part of the skill, I'm told, has a typo. It instead reads that when she runs out of oxygen and and services, she'll fire a barrage, as well as when she retreats, she'll fire a barrage. That's two extra barrages, more DPS. Third skill is just another barrage. I really like this sub. This actually means that you could potentially use non-KMS subs Cavella and Albacore with this sub look to be pretty good, and we're going to start seeing some synergy there. I like it. Great sub. All right, let's cruise through these elites really quick. First up, we have elite light cruiser USS Boise. With her light armor, medium health, and a main gun plus one firepower light cruiser, she reminds me a lot of Helena. Actually, kind of weaker than Helena. So she'll need some skills to help her catch up. First skill, 15 seconds after the battle starts, and every 15 seconds afterward, she fires a barrage guaranteed. This barrage is targeted, so that's really nice. It's also AP. This skill also increases her self-crit rate by 10%. She deals 10% more damage against heavy armor enemies as well. This AP barrage that's targeted and also the boost to heavy armor means this skill and this ship are going to look like they're designed to defeat heavy armor opponents. Second skill. While above 45% health, she increases her own firepower and anti-air by 15%. That's nice. While below 45% health, she decreases the amount of damage she takes from burn by 15%. That's pretty marginal, but I guess since she's light armor, that is going to be kind of nice. When she falls under 30% HP, she will heal herself by 10%. This is once per battle, so she does stay alive. She also has her AoE barrage like all other ships. Overall, this is a budget option. She's actually not half bad. You can use her if you're a new player, but she's definitely not a target ship for this event. So we're moving on to the Elite destroyer USS Morrison. Stat wise, what can I say? She is an elite destroyer. Pretty garbage. So we need a skill like Potter had that will make her pretty decent or even usable. Skill one, reduce self-ignited duration by three seconds. So she has kind of like a fire extinguisher, but this is marginal. Her HP is literally 2000. For every enemy this ship kills, self AA buff by 6%, self firepower buff by 5%, and the entire fleet anti-submarine warfare buff by 4%. This stacks 
five times. If you're wondering if Morrison had a main gun plus one, she doesn't, so having a firepower buff sucks. She's a destroyer, so having an anti-air buff sucks. And anti-submarine warfare is literally the most useless stat until we get potentially World 14, which we have confirmed will be coming, but this skill is not good. While alive, the flagship takes 25% less damage, and that's it. That's all she's got. She's got a barrage. Uh, this ship is trash. All right, that wraps up the new ships from the event, but we still have Little Enterprise coming from her own event, as well as Independence's retrofit that we'll go over, and we'll finish up the ships with those two before we get into the equipment. So for Little Enterprise, she will be an elite. She, of course, has weaker stats than her older self. She has the same loadout, but less of all the stats, so really, we just need a unique skill. She only has one skill, and that's when she fires a airstrike, she has a 100% chance to trigger one of three skills with equal probabilities, one third. She doubles the damage she deals for six seconds, or she evades all damage for five seconds. Oh, I see what they're doing here. She gets to pick one of Enterprise's skills. Third one, though, is new. All enemies are slowed by 30% for five seconds. This is an RNG skill. You don't want this. You literally can have Enterprise and get both of the first two skills together. She is collection only, of course. Independence. She, of course, gets a nice stat boost. She gets a buff to her barrage that she already had. And this is very important. She gets the supporting wings skill. You guys don't know what this is. This is Casablanca's skill that allows Casablanca to cross fleet buff aviation. This is amazing for mob fleet ships. This will not stack with Casablanca's skill, of course, because they're the same skill. But I would say that independence with this new skill makes Casablanca no longer unique and independence probably power creeps her. So that's interesting. You might be able to use independence with New Jersey because of those cross fleet buffing that they will be doing. So there is synergy here. I like it. All right, let's get into the equipment and the events. We only have one new equipment here and it's from the shop, but it is a UR battleship gun. The MK7, as the spoilers were indicating, is coming. And while many thought it was going to be an SR, it is a UR. This is a direct upgrade to the purple MK6. It is HE ammo. This will be fantastic for the upcoming Helena meta. This becomes the best in slot DPS for high explosive ammo. It has a slow reload time, but if you have any sort of reduced salvo timers, that will be fine. Insane amount of damage. This will be available to everyone in the shop. This is priority number one in the shop. Everyone needs one. We can't farm it, so that kind of sucks. However, speaking of farming, the steering gear will now be a droppable print in D3 of this event. If you are new and you need those steering gears, grind them, grind them, grind them. This is one of the best events for keeping your Vanguard alive, and so new players need to get that from D3. Older players, there's not anything great for you to grind, but might as well get some extra event points, but everyone needs to buy this out of the shop. This is a super best in slot equipment. It is UR, so of course getting it to plus 13 will be a pain with all those gold prints, but now we have the Iowa gun here, finally in the game. It is a monster fire dealing damage gun. Putting this on New Jersey, and man, that is gonna be a hellstorm. All right, overall, what do I think of all the ships and the events? Well, New Jersey and San Francisco look really good. They're both PVE ships primarily, though. There's not much PVP in this. Some people may be able to use something funky with Ticonderoga, but really, that's not gonna be any good. So nothing changes really for PVP, except the equipment. Of course, everyone is going to have to upgrade to this new UR plus 13 for their PVP stuff. For PVE, we have more cross-fleet synergy, so that looks like that's going to be a nice USS thing. We have Independence Power Creeping Casablanca. New Jersey is going to be interesting because we don't really have too many other good battleships that she can buff, so maybe when we get more of her sisters, she'll be even better. So far, I think this event is really cool. I still think I was being teased a lot with having the New Jersey potentially buff Bunker Hill, but she has to be in a different fleet, so Bunker Hill can't buff her back. Oh, that's irritating. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, this helps you with deciding what you're going to put your cubes into for this event. Best of luck with your polls, and I will see you guys next week when I get back from traveling. Subscribe to the channel if you want updates like this in the future, and and take care, guys.